what's cracking everybody new video so um i've wanted to stay out of this um topic regarding the the men that were killed by the co in high desert the other day right i saw a lot of videos on it but then i was thinking you know what um, I don't know if anyone has really touched on the realities of the situation, done it any justice, and made you guys out here aware of the seriousness and what's going on. And so I, I, I felt, you know what, I know that I know what my boundaries are, my personal boundaries that I place upon myself as a content creator, and I'm going to go ahead and make a video within my um, comfort zone, okay? So as we know so far, an incident occurred. We don't know who was the aggressors. We don't know, we don't know anything. We just know that men in prison became engaged in things that go on in prison, okay? Um, we also know that this was orchestrated by the California Department of Corrections. I think that is the most important thing to remember. And there's going to be people that are going to say, well, why should the CDC cater to this group or that group? It's not catering, man. That's like, like, you know, I try to tell people prison is a microcosm of the world. It is its own world. It is its own galaxy. OK. They don't live by the laws of society. They don't process their thoughts the same way someone out here would, because the world is completely different. OK. Let's say. There was an entity. That could place. A force that is known to be extremely violent and hostile towards the United States. And that group said, you know what? I'm going to put them in middle America. I'm not gonna prevent them from arming themselves. I'm not gonna do anything other than bring them and house them in middle America. I know they hate America, but you know what? So what? We wanna put them there. That's what we have going on. That's what people need to understand. These are men who are someone's father, someone's uncle, someone's son, someone's grandson. Whatever they have done to wind up incarcerated, they done. There is a law inside of those walls that will be adhered to. Now, an important thing is this. That officer made a decision to fire the rounds where he fired them. That's on him. Okay. I know for a fact that day he was told don't return to work because that's how it works. That's what happened in Pelican Bay. The officer that killed Sharky, Sharky rest in peace, he was moved. Um, I know that as soon as this incident occurred, as soon as Yard was recalled, there were there were the beginnings of discussions by men in blue, meaning the convicts, men in green, meaning the guards or correctional officers, and then a bunch of fucking squares and business suits that never stepped foot on those yards. You need to understand that when this incident happened, those in blue, the conversations that they started, I can imagine what they are. And hopefully cooler heads will prevail because in warfare things happen, but who knows, that's their world and they're gonna control it however they see fit. Those in green, the guards or correction officers, because there's a very big difference between a guard and a correction officer. They know that just like the Bulldogs, this is this is a very important point that I haven't heard being mentioned on any other video so far, and I need to stress to you guys. 
the guards and the COs are in the same position as the Bulldogs. And what I mean by that is the administration, these fucking wardens, these associate wardens, these, these, these people in Sacramento, they do not walk the yard. If they had to walk that high desert yard, if they had to go ahead and for whatever reason walk that yard for a month, they would have a completely different outlook. If they knew that at least one month out of every six months, they had to walk on those yards, I guarantee you there would be a different California Department of Corrections because they know they can be touched. But they don't. And so what do they do? They throw men, they throw these convicts wherever they see fit. And then they put their correctional officers, their guards in harm's way. Again, the guard that fired those shots, I don't know what happened. I know this. When the homie Shanky, rest in peace, was killed in New Folsom. I was already in the hole for getting into it with the Bulldogs. Shout out to Fresno. And when we were, when we were back there, the first homie that came back, the homies that came back, they were like, man, they killed the homie Shanks. So immediately, the temperature changed in the hole. And that was during the time when it, they wouldn't cuff both dudes when they let somebody out of the cell. The cops weren't even carrying their batons. It was the escort cops up with. They would come to your cell and if, you, if they needed my Sally, they would tell me, hey, step to the back of the cell. They would call my Sally the front and I would step to the back of the cell, turn my back to the door and they would handcuff my Sally in the, the handcuff port, open the door. My Sally steps out, then they close the door. So we knew, okay, they killed the homie because we were told he got shot in the head. A headshot is a completely different ball game. So immediately there were discussions. We're going to whack some huras. We're only going to get one shot. Because once we get this one shot, they're going to start cuffing us again and doing all the extras. The cops immediately felt that temperature change. And the cops that escorted Shanky off the yard came to my cell and went two cells down to someone else. Um, if I was to mention the name, you guys would know. Those of you that keep up on stuff, his name's been in the news. But it's not for me to mention that man's name. And they explained to us, this is what really happened. And what it was was Shanky was getting down. Because he was bent over, the bullet hit him in his in his right butt cheek. And I guess it hit like a hip bone and went across his chest cavity. And it blew out his aorta and everything else. So he didn't intend to kill him. He shot from the waist down. This, getting back to High Desert, this officer, I don't know what he did. I don't know what was going on. But I know that he chose to take those shots. And that has altered his life forever. But even though he chose to take those shots and live that dangerously, the administration made it all happen. I hinted at it the other day. There can be a yard that there may be somebody there that, that Sacramento wants to place in harm's way for whatever reason. What do they do? Send Bulldogs over there. See, because everyone else, for the most part, is getting along. Do you think the CDC likes that, that these individuals are getting along? They don't. They want bloodshed. They want violence. You know why? It's job security. It is an industry that's costing this state, what, close to 20 billion bucks, if not more now? Why is our Department of Corrections so fucking expensive compared to every other state? I don't get it. I mean, I know what it is. I know all that money isn't going into rehabilitation. I know all that money isn't going into the prisons. But it's in some banks. The most powerful union in the city, in this, in, in, Cal in department, in California, I can't even speak right. The most powerful union in this state is the CCPOA, the guards union. Next, I think, is the teachers union. Isn't that a trip? Shouldn't that be the other way around? So, like I said, I just wanted to give my two cents, man. I want you guys to understand, these fucking dudes in, in suits in Sacramento are jeopardizing your loved ones, if you have loved ones behind the wall. They're also jeopardizing your loved ones on the streets if they get their way and make the California Department of Corrections back into the fucking war zone that it used to be. You know why? 
because 80% of uh, California Department of Corrections are lifers. 80% are going to return to the community. If the CDC can get everything buck wild the way it used to be, constant war, constant stakings, dudes killing each other, they are going to have to parole people that are in that violent state of mind into your community. You think they're going to they're gonna get out and just be um, without decompressing at all, um, without having any positive interactions with people? You think they're going to come out and they're going to be perfectly um, well put together in their heads? Think of how it was before when in, in the 90s when you had all these dudes coming out. I'm not going to get into all that stuff. I just wanted to make you guys think about that. Something needs to be done about the way that they run this department. You know, up until recently, California had the biggest prison system in America. Now I believe it's Texas. But California had the biggest prison system. It wasn't until the feds stepped in and forced them to reduce their population. That's the only thing that stopped them because they were afraid of the feds taking over their system. If the feds would have came in and took over their system, the joke would have been on them. I believe some people would have went to prison for embezzlement and other things. I don't know how to remedy this, situa this situation politically, but I've mentioned before, we need to get on our congressmen and our congresswomen and our state senators and ask them what is going on with the Department of Corrections. Where is all the money going? Why are they playing with men? Why are they putting men in harm's way when things for the most part aren't as violent as they used to be as far as um, faction upon faction? With that, I'm going to let you go. Stay safe, stay smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them, right? I'm out.